Hello and welcome once again to Fair Tax Power Radio. I'm Bob Paxton. And I'm Ron Malero. And we are the, the Fair, Fair Tax, Tax Guys. Guys. Dedicated to the proposition that the IRS is a nasty institution that needs to go away. That the income tax is an absolutely horrible way to fund the government. It is the most error-prone, fraud-prone, invasive, intrusive, costly, inefficient way you could possibly devise to fund the federal government. And it needs to go away. And it needs to be replaced with the fair tax. The fair tax is fair, as they say. All right. Now, in the last episode, we uh, you remember... Uh, you did listen to the last episode, didn't you? Yes, and if you didn't, you can request one at thefairtaxguys at gmail.com, and we'll send you the, a copy of the last program, which was number three. This one's number four. But we were, um, we were happy to borrow from Mr. Foxworthy a little technique that he uses, all right, and apply that to the fair tax. Uh, Bob is very good at doing this. He's much better at it than I. So we're going to continue in that vein with the next item. Yes. What does the fair tax do for me? We will get into explaining the nuts and bolts of how it works and what it all is. But for now, we're addressing and hopefully you're interested in what's the fair tax going to do for me? Why should I support this? What's it going to do for me? Yeah. What's in it for me? And one of the things that you really need to know about the fair tax is that if you would like to see everyone pay their fair share, regardless of how much money they've got, no loopholes, no exemptions for special interests, you you might might be a fair fair tax tax fan. fan. If you listen to any kind of talk radio or listen to the news when you hear people talking about the income tax, one thing that infuriates uh, uh, most normal people is how, well, I gave the example of a couple of years ago, uh, GE paid no taxes in 2010. GE paid no taxes, but they paid no taxes legally because that's the tax system that Congress has given us, all right? And the same applies to very wealthy people who have investments. I mean, they don't necessarily go to the office every day, but they have investments here and there. And they also have a battery of CPAs and tax attorneys that can scour the tax system, and they find the loopholes that Congress put in there. And Congress put them in there to help their wealthy friends, all right? Uh, Not necessarily the rest of us, but to help their wealthy friends. So there's all kinds of exemptions and loopholes and exceptions and so forth. And you've got to have the resources to find these out. Now, if they're legal, do it. If you're running a business and there's a way you can reduce your tax burden, do it. If it's legal, I mean, it's got to be legal. And that's perfectly fine. If you're running a business and you're not taking advantage of a loophole, well, then that's kind of foolish. You're, you're uh, spending more than you need to. That's like buying your raw materials and not buying them for the best materials from the, from the cheapest vendor. That's foolish. So uh, how can the rest of us take advantage of these loopholes? Well, we can't. You know, uh, the, most of us do, we don't have the resources to buy these CPAs and, or, or to hire these uh, CPAs and tax attorneys and find the loopholes. Uh, you know, most of us just, uh, we either give our information to somebody and say, here's, here's my stuff, figure out my taxes, or you buy some software, put it on your computer, and hope that the software company's got it right, you know, and uh, that's it. So with the fair tax, None of that exists, all right? Everybody pays their fair share. And if we go back to our little money magazine example we had a couple of times ago, just oh. hiring a CPA doesn't necessarily mean he's going to know everything about all those loopholes. There's, I mean, there's just way, way, way too many of them for any individual to understand and know them all. That's right. In that example that Bob states, uh, the uh, a fictitious family of five, information, you know, income and all that stuff was given to uh, 50 different tax preparers over a number of years, and they usually came up with 49 or 50 different answers on how much this family owes in taxes. And that's because the tax uh, tax system is just befuddling to most people, even the professionals. Yeah, and for about 10 years, there's been an average of more than one change per day Yeah, to yeah. the tax code, and just about every bit of it is somebody buying special treatment. Yeah, that's right. And, and who with can the keep fair up tax, with it? no special treatment for anybody Period. And that's probably one of the reasons we're, we don't have a whole lot more Congress critters in support of this. But we'll get them. We do have uh, quite a few now, and we'll get some more. So Amen. anyways, but under the fair tax, no loopholes, special, special dealings, and so forth. Everybody pays their fair share. I mean, and the fair tax has got an incredibly simple 
an incredibly effective mechanism for making that happen. The way it works at the cash register when you buy something with a fair tax, there are no exemptions. Everything is taxed. The purchase of new goods and services, all taxed. There's, there's no deciding what's taxed and what's not like we have sometimes. Everybody pays the same rate at the cash register on everything they buy. That's which right. sounds really fair until you think about, well, wait a minute, that's going to hit the poor a lot more than it hits the rich. Sales taxes, consumption taxes in general are like that. You know, Donald Trump could very easily afford to lose 23% of what he owns to the tax man, but somebody barely getting by on minimum wage trying to raise two kids, take 23% away from them, and you have done a major hit to their finances. So there has to be a way in order for it to be fair that it does not crush the lower end of the spectrum and the higher end of the spectrum who can't afford it they pay i believe the uh, the americans fair taxation back in the 90s when they first came up with this realized uh you know we got a problem here with the uh the regressivity of a sales tax normally a sales tax is regressive and i've had people that when i've introduced the fair tax to them and that's the first thing they see uh they say is that well yeah but a fair tax is regressive it hurts the the lower incomes and normally, that's true with a normal sales tax, a state sales tax, county sales tax. That's true. It hurts the lower incomes. The Americans Fair Taxation recognized that problem, and they figured out a way to overcome it. Uh, and it is a rebate in the, in the first part of the month, which is they nicknamed the prebate. Now, let's explain this. First off, we said that everybody pays their fair share. All right. No matter what your income, if your income is, is great or small, you have to go to the store and buy groceries and the basic subsistence items of life. And yes, the fair tax will be charged on everything you purchase All right, and every service you pay for, every new item you purchase, All right, a new car. It will not be charged on a used car or a pre-owned house, things like that. Okay. So used items will already have been subjected to the fair tax. But Everybody, including the wealthy, will pay these things. And if a very wealthy person orders a large boat, yacht, a very fancy car, you know, a Bentley or something like that. I'd rather have a Learjet. Okay. Well, <laughs> you, you get the Learjet. I'll okay. get the Bentley. All right. And, uh, you know, they will pay the fair tax on that, too. But what about the people who are just getting by? What about the family of four that I talked about in the last program? They're just getting by. Well, I have some figures. These are, uh, these are from 2013. Uh, they're not immediately up to date. We haven't got the new figures yet from the America's Fair Taxation. But, but they illustrate the point. Yeah, but they illustrate the point, and you, you get the idea. According to Health and Human Services of the federal government, a family of four, mom and dad and two kids, it requires $31,020 for basic subsistence. That's an average across the country. And yes, we recognize that there are, there are different costs of living in different parts of the country, but let's, let's uh, keep it simple here. Yeah, just you'll hear purpose. that referred to as the federal poverty level. Yeah, That's exactly. what it costs a family, and of course it varies by household size. It takes more to raise five kids than two. So according to household size, it's very easy to figure out what the poverty level, because it's based on household size and not income, that's right. How much you have to spend, any family would have to spend to provide the basic necessities for themselves. So that family of four is making, let's say they're making right around $30, $31,000. They're just getting by. Like I said, they're not taking long trips to Hawaii and so forth. They're getting by with, you know, what they need. They're, they're putting food on the table. They're putting clothes on the kids and so forth. And they've got a roof over their heads. But they're not doing a lot of extra stuff. All right. Um, they're going to pay the fair tax as well as everybody. And yeah, of course, you know, you would stop and think, well, yeah, the guy who's earning $200,000 a year, that's not, you know, that's not as big a deal to them, but the people are just getting by. In recognition of that, the Americans for Fair Taxation said, all right, we believe that no one should have to pay taxes on what it costs to stay alive, all right? I mean, whatever government services you may be getting, you know, I'm retired, I get some. The government is not so important that you have to be taxed on what it costs to keep your family going. I mean, that's just crazy. No government is that important. That's not what the Founding Fathers had in mind, all right? The government can't be that important. So how do we avoid 
Well, you know, there have been some suggestions. Well, uh, we'll exempt them from paying the fair tax. Ah, that can be abused. That's a terrible no, idea. Once you get into deciding what's taxed and what's not, like we're, gonna, we're not going to tax food. You've got to go through the grocery store shelf by shelf, item by item, and figure out what's food and what's not. Now, the milk and the eggs is pretty easy, but how about the beer? Yeah, or the potato potato chips chips and things like that. Yeah, and I guarantee, as soon as you start letting some people get exempt from the tax and others, you're going to have lobbyists descending on Washington the way we've got it now, fighting for exemptions and and loopholes for their for their business, and we're going to have the same mutt mess that we've got now. So, in order to maintain the simplicity of the fair tax, it's real simple: no loopholes, no exemptions. I don't care who you are what you're buying, you pay the fair tax. But oh. to keep from crushing those at the lower end of the, of the spectrum, we just kind of rebate that back to you. All right, so we know that a family of four, mom and dad and two kids, takes a little over $31,000 to keep them going. And if they spend it all on the basic necessities of life, I mean, they're not spending any extra, then they are paying in one year $7,135 on the fair tax, all right? Yes, that's 23% of your $31,020, which is the uh, the figure, that was the poverty level for that household size last year. This so, year, it'll probably be a little more, but that's a bit. You figure out the poverty level, multiply it by 23%, that's how much fair tax you'll pay on that level of spending, and that is the amount of your prebate, and it, again, it doesn't matter who you are, how much money you've got, you receive that prebate so you're not taxed on what you decide. That's right. Is is the necessities of life. And if somebody decides they can't get along without, you know, their Budweiser, then they can go ahead, buy that, and as long as their spending's below the poverty level, the tax on that's covered. All right. The prebate, as Bob said, will is a refund, a rebate. Okay. They know that you're a family of four and how do they know that? Because the only information you have to submit to the federal government once a year is this is our family. These are the people in our household. These are their social security numbers. That's it. That's it. That's they all they have, have to know. They don't have to know where you work. They don't have to know what your investments are. They don't have to know how much money you make. They don't have to know anything about your personal finances. Just how many people are in your household is the only thing under the fair tax that the government needs to know in order to make this work. And based on the number of people in the household, they know what it costs to keep the household going. And they know that you're paying 23% of everything you're, you're purchasing, which in this case, you know, uh, $31,000 of, of your annual consumption, uh, 7,135 is the, is the uh, fair tax. So we're gonna rebate that to you in monthly allotments at the beginning of the month. So your family is gonna get a check for $595 at the beginning of each month, a check, a deposit to a a bank account, a credit to your debit card, however it is. I mean, it's going to be done probably electronically like most everything else is done now, all right? But $595 is going to be refunded, rebated to you at your household at the beginning of each month. You're going to get your full paycheck and you're going to get a prebate. Now, some people criticize the prebate. Oh, that's just another entitlement. It is not an entitlement. It is absolutely necessary to make the fair tax fair, okay? We don't want people paying taxes on what it costs to stay alive. It's that simple. We don't want taxes to be assessed or you know charged on the basic necessities of life. And yet, we don't want to have all these loopholes and exemptions and the section of the grocery store that's fair, you know, that's subject to the fair tax and the section is not. That's crazy. We can't do that. All right. So everybody's going to get, uh, get charged the fair tax. Everybody's going to pay the fair tax and everybody's going to get the prebate. All right. Whether you're just getting by or whether you're making $2 million a year, doesn't make any difference. If you're a family of four, you're going to get $595 at the beginning of each month. If you're just getting by, you're going to get 535, I'm sorry, $595. If you're mega rich and there's four people in your household, you're going to get $595. Everybody pays the fair tax. Everybody gets the prebate. The prebate is the key to fairness of the fair tax. So in in a nutshell here, what happens is everyone, regardless of who you are or what you're buying, will pay the fair tax at the register. But until your spending 
exceeds, they call it the consumption allowance, it's again the federal poverty level for your household size, until your spending exceeds the poverty level for your household size, every bit of the fair tax that you pay at the register is given back to you in the prebate, which means, you know, the, the left hand giveth back, or what, or let, what is that, how the right hand doesn't know what the left hand's doing or whatever, but the, what one hand takes away, the other one gives it back, so you don't pay anything out of your pocket until your uh, spending exceeds the poverty level. And believe me, it will be a lot more cost effective to manage for the government to administer the prebate than it is for the IRS to administer the current income tax. Yeah, and another thing we hear a lot of times on, uh, we have our, our local newspaper here. When they publish a letter to the editor, they put it in the on their online thing and they'll uh, open it up for comments. Yeah, yeah. And we've got somebody out there that always is saying, well, the retailer is going to have to determine whether this person is eligible for the prebate or not because it's going to be, a, you know, an administrative mutt mess and a nightmare. And, and actually it's not because when you buy something the retailer again doesn't care how much you make doesn't care what you're buying they just charge you the state sales tax it'll be the same with a fair tax it's exactly like that you are eligible for the prebate simply because you are a legal citizen with a social security number and the retailer really doesn't care is not involved at all no that that there will be no decision on the retailer's part they don't have to know anything about you you go in and buy a new toaster for the kitchen that's it. You buy the toaster, you pay the bill, it'll say, you know, so much for the toaster, so much for the uh, fair tax. You pay, you pay it, you're on your way, and you got your toaster. I mean, there's, there's no reason for the retailer to know anything else. It's very, very simple. Let's see. What happens to this family of four? Like I said, we got this family of four. They're just getting by on $31,000 a year, and things go well at work, and somebody gets a raise. Now they're making $35,000. All right, now they've got a little bit of discretionary money. What happens to the prebate? Nothing. It's the same size household. There's still four people in the household. They still get the same prebate. I mean, what if they get a gigantic raise? They hit the lottery or whatever. <laughs> prebate is the same. Four people in the household, they get the same thing. Two people in the household, they get, uh, let's see, a couple with one child gets $518. Let's go down here, a couple with seven children, they get $980. It just it depends on the size of the household. Income has nothing to do with it. How they spend it has nothing to do with it. It's very, very simple. But like we said, everybody pays the fair tax and everybody gets the prebate. Well, not quite everybody okay, gets the prebate. You have to be a legal citizen. All right, we're gonna to have to use E-Verify and check the social security numbers of everybody because you've got to be a legal resident of the U.S. to get the prebate. Okay, well, Ron, let's move on a little bit. One of the things that we hear a lot, and this, this was rather well publicized in the media while Warren Buffett was complaining about how his secretary pays a higher tax rate than he does. Of course, she works for wages, which are taxed at a different uh, different level than capital gains like he was getting. But under the fair tax, the only way that happens is if she spends more money than he does. That's right. Yeah. And I doubt if Warren Buffett's secretary is going to go out and spend more than he does. I just don't. I don't know. I could be crazy, but uh, I just don't think that's going to happen. Under the fair tax, we don't have to worry about any of that stuff. Yeah, it's mathematically impossible for that to happen. If they come from the same household size, they both get the same prebate. Yep. But if Warren spends a lot more money, he's going to end up taking a lot more money out of his pocket yep. to pay the fair tax than his secretary will. And you know, as your spending rises, the percentage of the fair tax you pay that comes out of your pocket versus what's covered by the prebate goes up. The more you spend, the higher your rate. No exemptions, no loopholes, no deductions perfectly fair to everybody and that's the only fair tax the fair tax is the only only tax reform proposal that can guarantee that rock solid yep like i said everybody pays the fair tax everybody gets the prebate or at least all legal citizens legal residents get the prebate okay so that that is the key to fairness that's what makes the fair tax work and it has to stay rock solid like that it can't be adulterated by congress now, we've got some other figures here that we want to uh, pass on to you right quickly before we run out of time again. Is, is Again, if you spend right at the poverty level, the fair tax you pay at the cash register is completely offset by your prebate. 
your out-of-pocket tax rate is zero. Yep. If you spend, it doesn't matter how much you make, but if you spend less than the poverty level, your tax rate, out-of-pocket tax rate is actually negative. Your prebate is higher than what you pay at the at the register. Yep. But again, let's looking at this uh, four four person household, two adults, two kids. If you spend forty six thousand five hundred and thirty dollars, uh, then you're actually going to end up with an effective out of pocket tax rate of seven point seven percent, which is a lot less than you're paying with the income tax. Oh tax. yeah, yeah, yeah. Nobody's paying uh, less than that. I guarantee it. Nobody. Yeah, but, I mean, that's the payroll taxes would be close to seven point seven percent. The payroll taxes go away with a fair tax as well. But if your spending, again, reaches up to $62,000, about twice of the poverty level, then your out-of-pocket tax rate is about half of what the actual overall rate is, 11.5% yep. out of your pocket. The rest of it's covered by the prebate. If you spend $124,080, 17.2% is what comes out of your pocket and the rest of it comes out of the prebate. So again, as your spending rises, the percentage of the prayer tax that you will pay comes more and more out of your own pocket. But that 17.2% is probably less, you know, people, people in that income bracket, I'm quite sure that's less than what the income tax that they're paying now. And how can that be? Because the fair tax is levied on everybody on every purchase of a new item and, and service in the country. Everybody pays. No loopholes, no, no exemptions. The, the tax base is spread out much more broadly. You know, even people now that are talking about wanting to tweak the current system, you hear, let's you know, close the loopholes, get rid of the exemptions, and lower the rate for everybody. Well, that's exactly what the fair tax does. And it does it in a way that really doesn't let the Congress come back in and monkey with it again. Because we've seen, we've seen this movie before yeah. when they flattened out the tax rates or I've done this before. And it doesn't take long. As we mentioned, there's been more than an average of one change to the tax code per day over the last 10 years. It morphs back into the mutt mess that we've got now. And the fair tax, again, is the only thing that can't. Now, the Congress can change the tax rate. But if they change the rate on the fair tax, they're changing it on everybody, not just for their selected buddies that are com that are co contributing to their campaigns. That's right. They uh, the only change that can be made to the fair tax once it's uh, accepted into law is they can change the rate. And if they do that, like Bob says, it changes it on everybody. What congressman is going to run for office and say, if you vote for me? I'll raise your fair tax rate to 24%. I don't think that person is going to get very far in his campaign, his or her campaign. All right. So that's, that's just ludicrous. All right. As, as we mentioned earlier, the fair tax rate is 23%, which means $23 of every you know, hundred you spend is fair tax. But you have to get up to close to a mil $2 million worth of spending before your out-of-pocket tax rate, thanks to the prebate, comes up to that. It'd be 22.6% if you spend $1,985,280. Yeah, yeah, because the, the prebate is, uh, is entered in there. So anyways, um, the prebate, as I said, is the key to fairness with the fair tax. It's very important. It, what's, it's, it is what makes the fair tax work properly, and it's what keeps it simple. It's so simple. All right. Yeah, you don't need to worry about exemptions. You just rebate the tax paid on your basic necessity spending to everybody. And that's how you can tell somebody. Sometimes you, know, if you try to talk about the fair tax to people, and they try to appear that they know more about it than they really do. Oh, yeah. And you ask them about, all right, well, what do you think of the prebate? And they give you a blank stare. Mm -hmm. So once you understand the prebate, that's, that's what really makes the fair tax thing. I'm going to throw out another website here besides our own, before, uh, besides our fairtax.org. Uh, there is another great website, uh, Popvox, P O P V O X dot com. You can track legislation on this site. Another reason I like it is because it was started by two ladies in D.C. Talk about entre entrepreneurship. This is great. It is actually used by Congress people to track legislation. So you can join Popvox by putting in your address. The reason they want that is because by putting in your address, you know, giving them your email and so forth. They know exactly what con uh, congressional district you're in. They know who your, your congressman is and who your two state senators are. And then you can go do a search, any legislation that you care about 
is on Pop Fox. Now, for HR25, you go and take a look at that, and you'll see there's a lot of information in there. And one of the things is pros and cons. I like HR25 because of this. I don't like HR25 because of this. First off, you'll find that HR25 has an amazingly high popularity rate. I'm pretty sure it's around 90%. Secondly, the negative comments, there'll be almost all of them are one of two. And I'm going to address the first one now. The fair tax is not fair because it's a sales tax and it's regressive. It'll hurt the poor. Immediately, you know that person does not understand the fair tax and has not taken the time to do their homework. All right, because as we've explained in this program, the prebate makes the fair tax fair. Okay, so I'll tell you what, time flies when we're having fun. We're about done here. So oh, if no. you would love to see everyone pay their fair share, no exemptions, no loopholes, no exceptions, you, you might, might be, be a, a fair tax, tax fan. fan. If you'd like to receive this prebate check from the government every month, you, you might, might be, be a, a fair, fair tax, tax fan. fan. And again, we, the way you make this happen is that you join Americans for Fair Taxation. That is the national grassroots organization that is supporting the fair tax, that is trying to lobby congressional people and senators to, to be in favor of it. And the only way, only way we get those people's attention is to show them an organization with a huge membership, i.e. there are a lot of us here and we vote. Are you, going, are you with us or are you not? Yep. So it is absolutely imperative, folks. We're going to hit on this every program that you join Americans for Fair Taxation. Now, we're not trying to get into your pocketbook. It is nice. It does take money to operate. And, of course, if people want to contribute to that, they can. But we need your numbers worse than we need your money. And that's why we have a membership level that starts at $5. You can pick your own membership level. No other organization that I know of lets you decide how much you want to pay to join that organization. But we want your numbers. AFFT, fairtax.org is the website. It's also important to, to note that the, the fair tax organization, both state and local, are almost exclusively volunteers. Everyone, I, I believe there's only one person in the national organization that draws a salary, all right? And that's necessary because she runs the day-to-day -day operation. But I know here in Florida, all of the board members, all of the volunteers are just that, volunteers. They get no pay for this. They do it because they love the fair tax and they love their grandchildren, all right? And so this is not some organization where it's top heavy and a lot of the contributions are going to salaries. Uh-uh, no, no, it's going to results. That's where it's going. You got it. So again, if you'd like to comment on the show, if you've got a question about the fair tax, if you'd like to request an audio copy of any of the programs, this one's number four, just send your request to thefairtaxguys at gmail.com. Again, that's thefairtaxguys at gmail.com. So I'm Bob Paxton. I'm Ron Molero. So until next time, remember, the fair tax, once you understand it, you'll demand it. Fair tax is coming.